Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I wanted to do a tier list for all of the going second cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! and how good they are, just in general. Um, so a lot of these cards are not specifically like hand traps or board breakers or anything like that, but more so just like anything that you could do realistically use going second to help clear boards and help make things um, like easier for you, uh, whether that's like to help push for lethal like with access code or just to help kind of get your own game plan online and make it like uninterrupted, like for example, with a Mono Iwato uh, or something like that in like a Floodgate deck. So um, yeah, here we're just going to start off. It's in alphabetical order. So of course we have ourselves access code. I think this needs no introduction. Yeah, it's stable. Uh, this is probably one of the best ways to just automatically OTK your opponent. Um, you don't really need too many other link monsters to go into this guy. Even just a 4,000 attack point monster oftentimes is enough paired with a little bit more, um, but oftentimes you can even get it up to 5,000. We all know this card. We all love this card. And we also all hate this card simultaneously. It's a love hate relationship. Um, this card's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, Ally of Justice, uh, or uh, I think it's like Ally of Justice something or other. I think it's an Ally of Justice card. Absolutely terrible. I think it banishes like two lights from Graveyard. This was used in Duel Links very specifically as a side deck option for Noble Knights, I think, because Noble Knights were like lights or something along those lines. Um, so you'd like banish them from the Graveyard to prevent them from actually going into anything. It's a terrible card. Um, it's just very bad in general, just because like while it is a hand trap, it doesn't really do anything. It's not like a tuner or anything. It does have some decent stats. I think it's like 1700, but all things considered, um, pretty bad. Uh, the Beast King Alpha is good. I think the biggest issue with him is that there isn't much of a payoff. Like, yeah, you could just like summon him and deal with an opponent's monster. And then you kind of don't really do anything like you can go to battle with him he can summon himself multiple times he's good and he's really good in like otk strategies and stuff like that um but he's not like exceptional he's not something where you're going to be playing him in most decks in fact most decks don't play him and the main reason for that is just due to like his limitations right um his level his attribute his typing i guess his level is fine as a level eight um but yeah there's a lot of things that are left to be desired uh he's good though he's very good um uh, it's just like being able to actually summon him and get him out onto the field and have him actually do anything is the biggest issue um i'm actually gonna put him in great he is he's very good he's just not like a, a top stable um when he's used he's used exceptionally uh this is uh arc rebellion or something like that decent otk option not great though kind of just it's not even like a good OTK option. It's just okay. It's more of like, it's good at dealing with... Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I'm thinking of the other one that just deals attack. No, this one's like a really good OTK option. Sorry. Uh, I still wouldn't move it up anymore just because you do have to actually go into the rank four engine, which there aren't honestly that many rank four decks that are good at the moment. Um, and even just like throughout history, it's still not great because there are still a lot of ways to interact with this and disrupt it sure it does have the ability to negate all other face-up monster effects on the field um maybe even yeah i think it's just monster effects uh but it does lock you into only using this card which means if your opponent doesn't have a whole lot you're not going to otk all that even or easily and uh if they have like back row it's not really going to be too good uh but it is a nice option if you have the rank four engine to just go for this and uh punch your opponent real hard Ultimate Slayer is also pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to put it up here in great. Uh, there are a lot of decks or a lot of cards now in the extra deck that specifically are good if they are sent to the graveyard. And on top of that, Ultimate Slayer has the ability to remove a monster from your opponent's side of the field without them being able to respond, which is really, really good um, as a removal tool. The biggest problem is having all of the necessary targets in your extra deck. It does take up some extra deck slots, uh, but with things like Entis and Herald and um, and Tribrigade Shureg and stuff like that, that wants to be sent to the graveyard, even Garura uh, in, the, in the TCG specifically, 
it's still very good. Uh, and against, like, tier, it's... I mean, it's not crazy, because they just bring the card back that you just got rid of. But, like, I mean, if you wanted a play starter, it's it's still pretty decent. <clears throat> and if you had, like, called by, it'd be even better. Um, Lancia is... I'm going to put this, this is the first one in situational. This one is either really, really good in a staple, depending on the format, or it's just kind of like there. Most decks do banish occasionally, but most decks honestly don't want to banish all that often. And so locking them out of banishing is more so uh, useful in very specific metas. Um, however, it's still decent. It's still a good light target. It's uh, it's just like good overall. I just think that it's a little bit more situational uh, than not. I'm actually going to switch to this color. There we go. A little bit more situational than a lot of these other ones. They're not something that you would just throw into, like, any deck. It's more so dependent on the meta, right? Like, if Branded is popular, maybe you'll play this, but it's still a little bit situational. Ash Blossom, pretty staple. Not going to explain that one too much. Blizzard is absolutely terrible. If you have ever read this card, uh, it's just abysmally bad. Um, Book of Moon is just straight up good. It's it's just a good card. Being able to either protect your monster from targeted disruption, either going first, or more importantly, as it go, a going second option, being able to either, you know, pre protect your target once again from targeted disruption, uh, or being able to uh, disrupt your opponent by forcing out something like a negate, uh, or, you know, flipping a card face down is pretty nice. The fact that it is targeted, though, as well as flipping a card face down means that something like a link monster isn't going to be affected, um, or if they have, like, target protection, it's not the greatest. Um, Book of Eclipse is pretty terrible as well. While it doesn't target, it does allow your opponent to draw a whole bunch of cards. So if you cannot kill them, and if they have a board of Link Monsters, it's not really going to do a whole lot. I'm going to put it in bad. I have literally no idea what this card is. So there's that. Um, this is Borload. F it's the Borload Fusion Dragon. Uh, I don't remember what it does, but I remember reading this and being like, yeah, this is this is pretty bad. Called by the Grave is an absolutely incredible card for both going first and going second, and the reason that it is so good is because it deals with anything that your opponent would want to do in the graveyard. Basically anything, right? Um, it either forces out the interaction by, like, you target something that would banish itself as cost, you banish, uh, th then they banish it, and then you could potentially deal with whatever um, the consequences of that would be. Like, for example, with a Shuffler, like Medora, Mudora or Keldo, you're able to target it, um force out the uh the the shuffle which could you know make it so that they don't actually have a disruption right or like have an extra disruption so it's it's nice but it's not uh it's not crazy in the current meta in like the tcg uh however it, it's it's still incredibly good against like branded like in master duel it's just like an auto win because you target whatever they branded in red and then it goes away um and, uh, like, it prote protects you from, like, hand traps if they want to use a hand trap. Um, it protects you from uh, a whole bunch of other things. Like, if they have a copy of another card that's already on the field, you get it called by that. Uh, it just kind of does everything. Uh, Change of Heart is great. It's just a steal of a monster, and it's really good, and it's a non-target, and it's fine. It's not... Ex yeah, it's not exceptional. Um... <clears throat> But all things considered, being able to steal an opponent's monster, yoink it, now it's mine, use it as link material, use it as uh, Xe material, something like that, is really, really strong. Um, especially in a more centralized meta, where uh, being able to have something like the same monster that your opponent has in like a mirror match, for example, in Ishizu tier mirror matches, it's pretty nice. However, you have to not mill it in that match, but it's still a very good card, all things considered. <clears throat> Um, Chaos Emperor is just bad. Pre errata, absolutely goaded card. Truly insane and deserved to be banned. Post errata, this card is mid at best. Um, <laughs> uh, Chimera Tech, both of the Chimera Techs are very situational. If you're playing Cyber Dragon, it's great. If you are not playing Cyber Dragon, it's literally useless. So, there's that. Uh, a lot of decks do fall into, uh, into the trap against... Sidra, uh, which is why I think Sidra is just a much better going second deck. You just get that free special, and then you're able to just, like, yoink an opponent's monster, which is really strong. Um, but if you're not playing Sidra, it's very bad, so. I have no idea what this card... Oh, I... Oh, I, uh, it's, uh... Oh, what is it? It's some sort of 
God Guard. I wish I could tell you what it is. Um, Cosmic Cyclone's just good. There are a lot of back rows that specifically are able to be protected from destruction. Uh, like, for example, with the Runic cards, they have Hugin to protect cards from destruction. So uh, Cosmic Cyclone kind of gets around that in a lot of easy ways. Uh, it's also a quick quick play, which means that you can chain it to a lot of other Floodgates as well. So if, so if your cards would uh, potentially go to the graveyard, you can quick play, activate this, and deal with the card, uh, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, just overall, very solid. Crossout is... I'm actually going to put this in situational. Crossout is really good if Max C is in the format. If Max C is in the format, you basically need Crossout with a lot of combo decks just to have an extra answer or extra answers to the bug. If Max C is not in the format, Crossout is okay. It's fine at best because... Uh, you don't have a centralizing like hand trap that you just need to get rid of. Um, however, it's still good, like negating a hand trap and negating something uh, that your opponent might have. Uh, I think in tier zero, it's kind of overlooked in a format where you're playing a bunch of mirrors, being able to banish a card and then say, no, you don't get to activate that card is pretty good, especially since you're playing a lot of the same cards. Pretty decent. Um, but yeah, it is very situational. This is another one of the... Uh, it gets rid of a whole bunch of cards. Like, you remove all of your machines to special summon it, and then it gets rid of, like, all the cards on the field, and then it, like, boosts up to a certain amount of attack. It's it, uh, it's not very good. Um, it gets rid of your entire field. It gets rid of your opponent's entire field, but it is very easy to disrupt because you just negate it, and th then it stops. Um, and there are a lot of negates that... Can deal with it. It has no other sort of protection. It's just a big dude. I think that's what this is. I could be wrong, um, because I genuinely don't know, but it's probably still bad. Uh Dark Hole is uh no, Dark Hole is just good. Uh there isn't really a format in which it's not good depending on your deck. Like for example, with uh with tier right now, being able to go uh Dark Hole, uh, destroy a whole bunch of cards and deal with um not only your own monsters, which could then trigger their effects, but also potentially a problematic board state. Uh, it's just a very good card in general. Being able to do, to wipe your opponent's field is always going to be pretty good. Dark Ruler is... I'm going to put it at the top of great right now. Um, it's very strong. <clears throat> it's not something that you want to use in every format, although we're kind of getting there. Uh, but it is something that is really strong nonetheless. If your opponent is basically making just a board of a whole bunch of monsters, being able to go Dark Ruler, prevent your opponent from playing the game, is very good. Uh, other than that, like, against any sort of deck that puts up one or two back row, it's not the greatest. Crow is... It's good. It's it's fine. Um, being able to remove a card from the graveyard is good. At a quick effect speed is good. Uh, you can also target spells and traps, which things like Called by can't, but... Uh, Unlike called by, it doesn't negate it. You just it just banishes. So it's sometimes really strong. Sometimes it doesn't do anything. Uh, D synchro is absolute garbage unless you are playing a really specific style of deck. Uh, same with D D fusion. Um, D fusion is a little bit better just due to like tier existing, but even then it's still not great because they get the materials back uh, if they have them. So uh, maybe no. I don't know. Uh, and I mean, it's again, targeted, very specific, and it's only really good in like very, like it's not even situational, like a lot of these other ones. It's just very specifically in like tier zero formats where you would see this, where tier zero fusion or tier zero synchro, other than that, it's not really good. Uh, Denko Seka is good. Yeah, it's just good. Just shuts, it's a free normal summon that just shuts down all of the back row. Um, yeah, it's just good. DPE is absolutely insane, whether going first or going second. But going second, you activate your Fusion Destiny, or you get to Verte or something like that, and then you are able to go slap down a big boy who can get over just about anything in the format, while also being able to destroy a card on the field. And since it's non-target, it gets around a lot of protection. So, very strong. <clears throat> Dimension Shifter is like the definition of a situational card. It's either really, really good in your deck because you get to prevent your opponent from playing the game, like 
against branded or uh, or not branded uh, against uh, tier or tri brigade or something like that. They just don't play the game. Um, or you cannot play this card because you need the graveyard just as much. So it's very situational, but uh, it's very strong when you can play it. Pank is absolutely insane. Probably one of the best going second cards. It is a free body with a quick play disruption with the ability to uh, threaten battle with an easy summoning condition and just overall has decent support. There's a reason that it is currently limited to one on the list, whereas Alpha is not. Uh, Zayus is probably the best equalizer if you can make it. A um, lot of decks, a lot of decks can. Uh, Zodiacs are one card, Zeus. Um... Lyralisks are able to go into this easily. Uh, any level, any two level fours, uh, you know, go into Baguska, go into Zeus. Lots of ways to access this card. Lots of ways to just absolutely dismantle your opponent's board. If you are able to get more than, uh, than three materials on it, if you can get four or more, it becomes even more threatening with the double, um, uh, double disruption. I think this is just like kaijus in general. Oh, there are a whole bunch of kaijus. Uh, I'm just going to go... Where's Gamma Seal? Where's Gamma Seal? Okay. Uh, kaijus are S tier. <clears throat> I'm just going to use the Gamma Seal as kaijus. Kaijus are absolutely insane. Being able to tribute an opponent's monster without them being able to respond is very good. Very, very few things have protection from being tributed. I think Quintet, Ma Quintet Magician, as well as very few other cards are able to not be tributed and because of that um yeah kaijus are just absolutely crazy they deal with towers they deal with just big problematic boss monsters and most of the time they don't really have an effect that's worth noting so giving your opponent a basically just beat stick is fine most of the time um and it just deals with any problematic monster also you can go give your opponent a kaiju and then special your own which is really really strong Droll and Lockbird is great. Just a solid card. It shuts down a lot of decks in the current metagame. Even just preventing them an additional search, even if they're only going to search twice, sometimes is enough. Um, but even if they are going to search a lot, like, for example, with Flunder or Drytron or something like that, just being able to turn off their turn and say, no, you don't get to play the game, can sometimes just win you the game. Um... It's either absolutely insane or it's just kind of okay. Uh, sometimes they won't even activate. So there's that. Uh, Eater of Millions is good. Being able to, again, inherent summon a monster that is able to contest something in battle is nice. However, you do need to banish cards, which is kind of steep. Um, you basically don't have, like, you can't have good cards in your extra deck that you want if you want to play this card. Um, and two, because it is an activated effect to actually deal with a monster in battle, it's not nearly as good as something like Pank or um, Alpha, because you can't just walk over the monster and beat it in battle. You actually do have to deal with it by effect, which a lot of things can uh, prevent that from happening. Effect Veiler, good card. Negate an effect, pretty standard. Um, just solid. Yeah. Evenly matched is really strong as well as a going second option. It does remove your battle phase, which a lot of OTK style decks or just decks in general wants to have, especially going second. Like that's the whole benefit of going second is that you get the battle phase. So skipping your battle phase to actually activate this and put your opponent on potentially one card is very strong, um, but it's not insane because you do have that restriction. Exiton Knight is actually by modern standards, it's... Oh, I want to put it in bad, but it's not. It is. It is bad. It's bad. Um, yeah, it's just bad. Too easy to disrupt. Too easy to uh, prevent from actually like having effect, right? Um, if your opponent doesn't actually have all that many cards in hand or on field, which isn't all too unlikely, uh, Exiton Knight's not really going to do anything, right? It requires you to get two level fours onto your side of the field, which is unlike, you know, Zeus where it is the payoff, it's not really as good of a payoff. Um, it destroys, it doesn't send, which means a lot of things come back. It, you know, it's specifically two level fours. I think I think it requires a dark monster. I don't remember. Not the greatest. 
<clears throat> Albaz is entirely situational. If you have the branded stuff, it's great. If you don't, it's not. It's pretty simple. It's not even super poly. It's pseudo super poly because it only really works with a very select few monsters. So it's not as good. Um, eh, very situational. Uh, I know what this card does, but I cannot remember the name of it. Again, situational. If Link Monsters are the definitive thing to be playing, this card's great. If Link Monsters are not that good, uh, not nearly as useful. So, like, right now, absolutely abysmal. You would basically not be wanting to play this, like, at all, in any format. Um, okay, now we have a whole bunch of Chalice cards. Uh, what is this? Uh, Forbidden Chalice is pretty good. I'm gonna put it at the bottom of great. Uh, it's good. It is just a very solid way of, uh, like, ensuring your own combos go through by negating a monster effect. Very nice. Forbidden Dress is... Oh, both of these are pretty terrible. Lance is... Uh, it's situational. If you're playing against a lot of back row, uh, and specifically the back row is the disruption, so not something like Revolt or... <clears throat> or... Um, Soliac or Crime or something like that, then it's... It's good. It's also kind of a battle trick. Same with, same with this one. Uh, Droplet is absolutely insane. Yes, the requirement of having to send cards to the graveyard is probably the biggest downside to it, but it does have the ability to be n something that your opponent cannot respond to, while also potentially starting your combos if you're playing something like, for example, a, uh, a Tri Brigade deck, sending Nerve All to the graveyard can start your combos. But more importantly, it also... Uh, is like a battle trick while also being a um, a negation for monsters, which is really, really strong. Time Lords are bad. I'm sorry. All the Time Lords are bad. There's not like a single good Time Lord. They're just not good options. They kind of do things, but they deal with themselves. You can't really do much else with them. And like their effects are kind of mediocre sometimes. Like you have to draw the right one. And even then, they're not great. We've talked about Kaijus. Uh, Cyclone is... I'm, I'm going to also put it in situational. It can be good if, like... Again, in tier, right now, you could tech in this card because you'll mill it to the graveyard, and then you're able to banish it from your graveyard to pop a field spell, which is very nice, or just a face-up face up spell trap, uh, which is very nice. Um... It's kind of like a slow MST, more or less, um, that also has an effect in the graveyard that could potentially be beneficial. Other than that, it's not too great. It's just kind of another form of back row removal. Uh, so, yeah. This card is banned. Um, and not for what it does going second. But it's still, like... I'm, I'm just going to ignore this card. I mean, it's banned. It's just tr straight up a banned card. Um... Ghost Bell is a great card. A lot of decks want to use the graveyard. This says no. Uh, it also pr protects you from things like Droplet, which is also very nice. Um, so, yeah. Just overall, the solid, the solid card. It also hits a lot of things that you wouldn't expect because, like, maybe they're going to use in effect to special summon a card from the hand, but the card can also be special. A card can also be special summon from the grave. Therefore, you can Ghost Bell it, and stop it, which is kind of funny. <clears throat> Moonlit Chill. I think this is the one. Yeah. Moonlit Chill is good. It's kind of a in effect Veiler, but you can also, I think, do you gain life points or do they lose? I think they lose life points. Um, so it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's decent. I'm going to put it, uh, oops, sorry. I'm gonna put it up here below Dark Hole. It's decent. Ghost Ogre is also pretty good. Not crazy, but it's pretty good. Being able to pop a card is nice. Uh, Winter Cherries is entirely situational. If there are a lot of extra deck monsters that are specifically used in a wide variety of decks, then it's great. If there, uh, and you also aren't gonna use them. Um, if there aren't those specific requirements, it's not really at all useful. <clears throat> We have a uh, spooky dogwood, which I believe gains 
life points equal to the or up to the number of monsters special summon like they gain attack or you gain life points equal to the attack of monsters that are special summon that turn it's like only useful because of time rules but other than that it's not great it's like the worst version of maxi uh harpy's feather duster is absolutely insane and should be in everyone's side deck and or main deck if it's a best of one format because dealing with back row in such a way is absolutely insane hey trunade is is pretty bad being able to only deal with set cards is just not enough infip is probably the best hand trap all things considered um it's targeted non once per turn disruption uh by negating a monster effect while also dodging uh called by which is surprisingly important uh, the fact that it is not a monster is also incredibly valuable. There are a lot more monster negates than there are trap negates in particular that people go for because it's a very monster heavy um, game. So, yeah. Inspector Border is just, it's just bad. It's just bad as a going second option. As a going first option, it's pretty decent because you basically lock your opponent out of the game. Going second, if your opponent has one monster interaction, this card is gone. <laughs> So most of the time, this card doesn't do anything. Um, I'm just, like, straight up as a second option, it's just not good. When paired with things like Moon Mirror Shield, it's better. But by itself, it's not actually that good of a going second card. Going first, great. Going second, not good. Uninterrupted Kaiju Slumber is basically Dark Hole, but you also get Kaijus. Um, yeah, that's it. You just you just slap down two Kaijus onto your field, but also Dark Hole. Um, it's decent. Gonna get rid of these guys. Out comes Nightmare Cerberus. Nightmare Cerberus is good. It's just a generic link monster that you can go into to deal with uh, monsters. Crazy. Uh, same with Phoenix. Unicorn is a little bit better. I'm actually gonna put it in great. Uh, probably not the top of great. Yeah, I'm gonna put it like below evenly. Hold on. There we go. Um, yeah, Nightmare Unicorn being able to just return a card to the deck and shuffle the deck is really good removal that's probably one of the best removals um and it has decent stats but it being a link three is very good just in general it gives you easier access to a lot of link fours that are very powerful such as access code um so yeah just a decent option yeah nightmare griffin is I'm going to put it in situational. It's not good going second. Uh, no, I just... No, it's just bad going second. It's just not really worth it to use it as a going second option. For going first, it's good. Um, and if you clear the be the field already, it's good. Um, but, like, for helping clear the field and for helping push for lethal and stuff like that, it's not the greatest. Still pretty good. Like, it's a great card. It's a fantastic card, in fact. It's just, like... As a going second card, it's not. Um, I do not remember what this card does, but I remember that it was pretty decent. It's not... It, no, no, no. It's very situational. I remember that. That's all I remember. We're moving on. Layer of Darkness is, a, uh, again, a very situational... You legitimately have to build your deck entirely around Layer of Darkness for it to actually be a good going second option and a good form of removal. Lava Golem, on the other hand, is not that. Uh, it is a kaiju that takes up your normal, but instead of getting rid of one monster, it gets rid of two. Don't really need to explain how good that is. It's good. Uh, more Time Lords. Oh my gosh, this guy is so bad. He becomes big if you tribute a whole bunch of monsters and he deals piercing. That is it. No protection. No other effect. Also, he doesn't have a defense point value, I think. Yeah, pretty bad. Lightning Storm, on the other hand, is... Probably not as good as Infip, but very, very strong. Being able to either get rid of face-up attack position monsters or set cards, or more specifically, back row, is kind of crazy. Sure, you can only activate it once, and if you have no other face-up cards on the field, but, as a go again, as a going second option, it is by far one of the best. De being able to deal with either way, you know, either monster uh, or spell trap is 
insane and truly just powerful. Just incredibly powerful. Lightning Vortex is what, uh, or is... Lightning Storm is to Lightning Vortex as, like... No, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's just not a good card. Being able to discard a card to deal with all face-up monsters is nice, but also, uh, we have Raigeki. Raigeki exists, and because of that, Lightning Vortex just isn't worth it, right? You're better off just playing Dark Hole, which has no cost. It just, I mean, you deal with your own monsters, but, like, at the very least, you don't have to discard a card. Um, and oftentimes, nowadays... Uh, you're either going to drop this on turn one when you don't have any monsters or your monsters are going to float anyway, whereas this is just not very good. However, it's good in Duel Links. Um, speaking of Raigeki, I want to put this like up here. Uh, it's 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 very, very strong. Being able to deal with monsters um, not once per turn is insane. I don't know why this card is at more than one. This card is absolutely busted. Uh, even in a best of three format where you have the ability to potentially play around this, sometimes you just lose to the Saki one of because you do not have a, you know, a spell trap negate and your opponent goes, ha ha, die. So, that's fun. More Time Lords. Uh, more Time Lords. Mind Control is... It's fine. Uh, you kind of steal a monster. Most of the time you don't. So, it's okay. But, I mean, stealing a monster is such a great effect that, I, yeah, there's that. Uh, Moon Mirror Shield makes it so that you always win combat. This is actually just a really, really good going second card. You can slap down any monster, slap it with a moon mirror shield, you will beat whatever boss monster your opponent has summoned. It's that good. I. It's just hard not to say that it's not a good going second card. The problem is that uh, it does basically require you to go to combat, um, which takes up your battle phase without really doing much more than that. Uh, but it is just kind of like a, a, a pseudo kaiju. It's kind of a two card combo. Mystic Mine is absolutely goaded and is one of the best going second cards ever printed. Uh, however, it is banned now. So there you go. Back to the garbage with you. Shadal Ariel is very situational. If you're playing Shadals, it's great. If you're not playing Shadals, it's trash. It, I, what else do you want from me? Necro Valley is not the greatest of going second cards. It's good. It locks down some strategies and it does prevent your opponent from doing things specifically in a meta like tier where they are playing on your turn. It's great going second. However, in metas that aren't specifically playing on your turn, which most metas in the past have been, it's not all that powerful. So while it is good, it's still a really solid card. It's not as good going second. I think it's much better going first as a floodgate to prevent your opponent from doing things, especially in a side deck where you're able to just like, you know, you're playing pendulums, so you don't care about the graveyard. And then you slap down a Necro Valley and your opponent goes, well, good game. <laughs> uh, okay. This card, Grand Mole, was great. Phenomenal going second card. Nowadays, it is not. It's not. It's just not. Because dealing with one monster by using your normal summon, and by using your battle phase, and by activating an effect, is just so abysmally bad. However, speaking of not abysmally bad, uh, Nibiru. Nibiru just beats, like, any combo deck, like, single-handedly most of the time. Um... Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. There are a few exceptions, like, for example, at Emancipator, being able to put up a gate um, in less than five summons, or tier, right? There are decks that it doesn't beat. Most decks, however, even with, uh, even with those other decks in mind, it can still beat all of those decks. Uh, absolutely crazy. It is very situational, realistically speaking, but it's so good in that the situations that it's useful in that it is just a stable card. It has been in just about every meta since its inception. Good card. Moving on, Silent Honor Arc has so fallen from grace. Um, it's still good, though. It used to be the go-to option to deal with opponent's monsters, and now it's just okay. Uh, it, it does its job. It's a way to remove uh, opponent's monsters from the field while also protecting itself. Um, and with this, you can go into other... 
uh, the other silent honor arc like rank up um, which is even better because it deals with monsters non-targeting um, and stuff like that but it's still not crazy um, both of these are bad because I believe both of them are spell... One of them is spells, one of them is traps. I do not know which one, but I do know both of those are pretty bad, all things considered. <clears throat> the spell one is slightly better, so whichever one the spell one is, it's slightly better. Um, but they're too bricky. However, Gamma, on the other hand, is just great. It is a solid card. And the reason for this is because the difference of dealing with a spell or a trap and destroying it is negligible. Dealing with a monster and negating its effects while also destroying it is great. That means that a material is off of the field, a card is now no longer being able to be used as something like a link or an exe material or a synchro or what have you, um, and you're able to then put bodies onto your side of the field, which is also very nice. The stipulation and the reason that it's not a staple um, is just the simple sheer fact that it does require a a bit too much not being able to have a face-up monster on your side of the field uh, or just a monster on your side of the field is a little bit harsh for it to actually activate and for it to work but all things considered it's still great <clears throat> uh, another kaiju don't know what this is rainbow neos is funny all things considered it's just funny most of the time um <clears throat> rainbow neos being able to deal with whatever your opponent specifically does or has is very nice, but summoning it is the problem, especially with Verte Band in both the OCG and the TCG. It's not really easy to get into this guy, and you kind of have to play very specific cards like, you know, Neos Fusion, which isn't exactly great. Um, and then you also have to play two not great bricks, but it's also very funny, so I don't want to put it in bed. Um, but, I mean, it is bad. I don't know what this is. Red Reboot is absolutely insane. Um, I, would, I wouldn't even say it's situational due to the fact that so many decks are playing trap cards. Like, just whether it's Infip or whether it's um, Floodgates or just so many different things. Being able to side this card. This is also banned in every format. No, no, no. It's banned in just the TCG. Uh, no, is it banned in the OCG? I think it's limited at one, I think, in the OCG. Something like that. Anyway, um, Red Reboot is absolutely insane and just truly an exceptional card. Being able to, again, shut down all traps for the turn is so incredibly powerful. With other cards like Access Code and Zeus just being able to completely deal with the opponent's board, even if they do end up setting another card, it just doesn't matter. Uh, Red Reboot is insane. And since it's a, a counter trap, the only things that can respond to it is other counter traps, which means your opponent already has to have, like, a really solid setup. And then even then, if they negate it, you're basically going two for one, right? Um, or I guess it's like two for two, but still, it's an insane card. <clears throat> because it could be played from the hand. Anima is very situational, but it is very strong when it works. Does it work often? No. People normally play around the zones pretty decently at the very least, and oftentimes you don't have a level 1 monster to actually utilize to go into the anima, but dear Lanta, when it works, it works wonders, and you just get a free monster off of the field. Okay, this one is also very situational. It is the Silent Graveyard. You just shut down the graveyard. This is only good in like Ishizu tier format or any other format that specifically wants to send cards to the graveyard and have them activate in the graveyard on your turn, which is like two decks. I can legit think of two decks that have been meta that have done this. And it's tier and Tri Brigade. That's it. I I don't know what other decks this would be good against. However, when it's good, it's good. Uh, it's like Necro Valley, but better because it just it's just a quick play version of um, Abyss Dweller, which is great because then you don't have to make Abyss Dweller and give them opportunities to actually interact with you. You could just be like, no, shut up, which is great. Um, Skullmeister, however, on the other hand, is a better version of this. Um, however, unlike this card, uh, Skullmeister can be used on the first turn, meaning you can stop them at least once uh, from an activation, which is nice. They don't get to activate something in the graveyard. Really good against a lot of decks. There are a lot of decks that uh, this does hit. 
But unlike Silent Graveyard, um, it is only once. It only shuts them down once. But it's also a monster, which helps immensely. Sometimes you just need to normal summon a 1700 to beat her and attack your opponent. Um, I have won quite a few games. Too many, I would dare say, in Duel Links because of this card. So, um, but even even without that being said, still just a really solid card. And because you can use it going or on the first turn, it makes it a little bit better. Uh, Widow Anchor is, I mean, it's literally only good in Sky Striker. I, I don't know what else you want from me. This is a very funny card, but again, it's only situational if you're really playing the god cards. Um, being able to just like tribute your opponent's monsters is really cool. I mean, it's it's nice, but you also have to activate this effect and resolve it, which means they have a response window. They can interact with that. Uh, Special Hurricane is surprisingly good. No one plays it. Why? Because... It's just a little bit too much of a cost for such a slow card that doesn't quite do enough, right? Um, it's similar to Lightning Vortex, but um, just... Actually, no, this is just like a bad card. It's just Lightning Vortex, but worse. Um, Starving Venom is, again, only... Situ it's, it's situational because of Super Poly. Super Poly, on the other hand, absolutely goaded card. Uh, this card just... Not being able to respond to it is one of the craziest things. So, you know, there's that. And it deals with so many different monsters because of the addition of things like Garura and uh, Mud Dragon. More Kaiju, more Kaiju. Vashada is also very situational. Um, yeah, Vashada is very good as a starter for any sort of worm deck. Uh, because it just allows you to like summon it, go into Monk, banish it, bounce a monster, which is great removal. Uh, but other than that, I mean, now you have Monk on your side of the field, which could potentially mess up your combos. Um, but all things considered, it's still mostly a really, really strong card. Uh, but it is a little bit situational. Sphere Mode is... <sighs> It's, 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 it's great. It's great. Being able to uh, normal summon something to your opponent's side of the field can be very, very, very strong. Um, however, unlike with Lava Golem, it's not a special summon, which means that you only get the one normal summon. With Lava Golem, a funny thing that you can do is if your opponent has a whole bunch of cards, you can actually Lava Golem them multiple times, right? So you can like Lava Golem and then Lava Golem your Lava Golem, which is really cool. Sphere Mode can't do that. Also, if they're playing raw, you can then summon raw, which is funny. But more importantly, uh, being able to get rid of three things, three monsters by tributing is really good as a going second option. Not everyone ends on three monsters. In fact, most don't. Most end on either four or more, which means that dealing with three may not be enough. Or they end on two. A lot of times people end on two, right? So, <clears throat> decent. Thousand Eyes Restrict is actually not very good because of uh, Instant Fusion being at one in every format, I think. Um, however, Instant Fusion being able to go into a myriad of different options is pretty decent. I'm actually going to put it up, up here in great. Uh, there are a lot of targets for it, but I mean, Thousand Eyes Restrict is fine. Um, it's not. I'm, I'm actually just going to put it in situational. Yeah, if you draw Instant Fusion, it's pretty good. If you don't, it's not. <clears throat> This is a bad card. I've read this card. It's not a good card. Token Collector is absolutely situational. Uh, Zeroboros is... It's good. There are a lot of decks that can take advantage of just getting a big bungus onto your side of the field and then potentially banishing a whole bunch of cards. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's just a big dude. It's pretty simple. <clears throat> However, it is a little bit more difficult to actually utilize effectively, so that's why it's not higher up on the list. Triple Tack is... Great. One of the best cards, being able to rip a card out of your opponent's hand going first is probably the best thing. In terms of going second, though, it's not actually all that good now that I'm thinking about it. The best that you could do 
is steal an opponent's monster, which is pretty good, or draw two to continue your combos. So it's not as useful because that ripping a card out of your opponent's hand doesn't matter nearly as much going second, but the other two effects are pretty decent. And the requirement is very much easier if you are going second to fulfill. Um, so your opponent will like activate a monster effect and negate an effect, and then you go like this and you steal their monster. It's pretty good. Um, not crazy though, but very good. Twin Twister is Cosmic Cyclone, um, but if you specifically don't need to deal with uh, like a specific card uh, or there isn't like protection from destruction, um, you play Twin Twister because it just removes more. Still a quick play, still able to deal with good uh, a good amount of cards. The discard cost is a bit, but uh, being able to get rid of two cards is really strong. Typhoon is it's just it's just it's like MST but bad. <clears throat> Unchained Soul is situational. Um, same with this one, situational. Um, Underworld Goddess is actually really really good. Just having access to this card is very strong in towers formats mostly. Um, I'm actually going to put this in situational. It's mostly useful in like towers formats, but it's still one of those cards that is useful in just about any format. Being able to just get a monster off of your opponent's side of the field to get a 3k body that's mostly unaffected by a lot of things is very cool. Uh, Time Lord. Amano Awato is great when it's great and terrible when it's not. If you want to activate a monster effect, it's absolutely terrible. If you want to not activate a monster effect, this is probably the best normal summon you could ever go for. It just says no. You don't get to play the game, and you can't respond to it 99% of the time unless you have a way to negate the summon, which, let's be honest, most people don't. Um, or like you have infip or something like that to uh, deal with it in like a spell trap sort of way. Um, this card is I know what this card does. It's only paired with Labyrinth of Darkness, really. And even with that being said, it's still bad. I think this is a Time Lord. I could be wrong. I I don't know. Uh, Armor Master is just bad. Uh, it's, it's such a bad going second card. It's good because it's a Towers, but as a going second option to just like punch over something, it's not even that high of an attack stat because it's only 3k. And since it's unaffected by everything else, it's just like, all right, doesn't really do anything. I think this is a god card. Let's be honest. It's not very good. Um, yep, yep, yep. Creature swap. I mean, if you can get it to work, it's not terrible. But also, it's not, like, the greatest. <laughs> this is great in older formats. Uh, and it's still not bad here, because being able to, like, give your opponent something and then steal... Like, if they have a big towers or something along those lines, you could just steal their monster. Not not bad, but, I mean, all things considered, it's... I'm, you know what? I, the more that I'm talking about it, the more I'm like, nah, it's just... It's actually just a bad card. Um, I think this is the fusion spell for Dark World? I, I don't know. Uh, I think this is Wallow. Wallow's pretty good. I could be wrong about this. That looks like the card art for... Well, no. That is... That's a Destiny Hero thing. Isn't it? I don't know. I'm just going to ignore this one. Dark is crazy. Dark is absolutely insane. So many meta decks have a dark monster in the graveyard. Being able to link off using any two monsters, at least one of them having to be dark, and then steal an opponent's monster gets you a free Link 3. It's just so powerful um maybe it's not that high but it's still incredible this is funny uh it's a god card that makes your monster unaffected or something along those lines i don't remember exactly what it does but i mean it's a god card that's kind of useful Geomath Max Sigma is fine. If you can make it, it's pretty decent in the extra monster zone, but that also turns off all of your link monsters and it turns off a whole bunch of other things. But all things, you know, I mean, if you're able to actually make this, especially with the Math Max, to make it a 6,000 attack point monster or at least deal a whole bunch of damage, it's good. <laughs> Geonator Transverser is... It's situational. 
It comes up occasionally, where being able to non-target steal a monster is pretty cool. But it also requires three monsters to really do anything. It requires the two to summon it, and then the one to actually uh, trade away, which some decks can't really put up too easily. And your opponent has to not play around the Geonator Transversor zones, so there's that. No idea what this card is. No idea what this card is. Guardian Chimera is a good card. In fact, it's a great card. Um, it's specifically only useful in fusion decks, but any fusion deck can that can make this is very good for going second. You make this, you pop your opponent's field, or you... Um, uh, you, and or you draw cards, and it's just very solid in terms of what it can do, and it being generic, or at least reasonably generic, means that it is something that a lot of decks can play. Solid, solid card. Uh, Harpy's Featherstorm is just too situational. Uh, you do need a Winged Beast. However, going second, it's also not the greatest, because you have to set it, and then wait a turn, and then you can activate it, so you have to have the Wing Beast on the field before you can actually activate it. Which does work sometimes. Sometimes, like, playing that slow is enough. Like, if you get a Wing Beast and just pass the turn, and then your opponent goes, and then you just flip this up and you go, Ahaha! No more playing the game. You know, sometimes it works. Sometimes they don't have that Omni Negate. It, you know? Yeah. It, it happens. But all things considered, as a going second card, it's not great. It's still good, because it just, like, shuts down a lot of things. But it is very, very situational. Um, both the Spell and Trap Heralds are just bad. Uh, similar in nature to the the Gammas. Uh, or, not the Gammas. The, um... Uh, Psyframes. The problem is, while, yes, they destroy, they have to send another card from hand. That being a Fairy, which is very situational. And, again, destroying a spell and or trap just isn't nearly as useful because they are most of the time already going to the graveyard, so sending them to the graveyard by destroying them most of the time doesn't do anything. Yes, there are continuous and stuff like that, but that just doesn't matter nearly as much. However, Herald of Orange Light in fairy decks or in decks that can play fairies is very good. Again, negating a monster effect is way more valuable and just provides a lot more uh, in terms of, like, getting a body off of the field and stuff like that. No idea what these cards are. I'm not going to look it up. Inferno Tempest is very situational. It's using, like, cheese decks. Uh, Jinzo is f fine. Um, I, again, it's more of a situational thing. Dealing with back row as a tribute summon, not exactly the greatest. Lina is a worse version of Dark, but still good because it is a light version of it. Um, so if there is a lot of light monsters, you're still able to actually do things. So it's it's not, it's not bad. Uh, Mud Dragon is... I mean, it's only useful with Super Poly. No idea what this is. No idea what this is. Secret Village of the Spellcaster is honestly pretty bad as a going second option. Um, yeah, first of all, you have to stick a... A spellcaster monster on your side of the field, while also then not having your opponent have something to deal with this, like a spell or what have you, uh, or having them just like chain a spell uh, or a negate or something like that. As it's going second option, again, not great. As it's going first, it's fine. Um, yeah, I have no idea what this card is. Uh, System Down is really good in machine heavy decks. Uh, or machine-heavy metas. If you, there are a lot of machines running around in the meta, system down, being able to just, like, deal with them entirely is insane. Other than that, it's not great. Um, and then Zombie World as the last one. Zombie World's good. Its restrictions are oddly very useful in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! and even in non-modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, because of the fact that, one, it prevents you from tributing monsters, or tribute summoning, I think, specifically. But two, it turns everything in both the field and grave into zombies, which is very nice. Whether going first or second, this is still a decent card. Much better going first, as most floodgates are, but still a great going second option. As for the rest of these, these don't matter. So, this is the list. Lots of cards. Um, I... I I think we can agree with at least the staples. These are all just staple cards that are just so exceptional. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, 
there's the list. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. That's going to be it for this episode. If you did enjoy it, like us very much, so appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.